Hi everybody, my name is Justine and I'm the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Manager and I'm here today with Dr Alex Lockwood who is a Senior Lecturer in Journalism and Creative Writing and he's here to talk a little bit about veganism. Uh, just to give you a little bit of an introduction, uh, this year a tribunal ruled um, that ethical veganism um, is a belief and therefore protected by law so it's covered under the Equality Act 2010. So Alex, maybe you can start by explaining a little bit about how long you've been a, be a vegan for and what your motivation was to become one. Sure, thank you. Uh, I've been a vegan for, I don't have a vegan anniversary. Uh, okay. It's about 10 or 11 years. Um, and I was motivated for animal ethical reasons in that I didn't want to continue to um, exploit or use animals in any way. And I, that grew for me out of... Um, a real sense of wanting to and it, it, it actually grew out of environmental concerns um but very much uh, around ad ethical reasons for protecting animals and help and considering ourselves as one of many species on this planet rather than the most important exceptional species um and you know it, it came as well from a place of uh working with more animals and wanting to really tackle some of the big problems on the planet mm -hmm. um and actually animal agriculture is one of the biggest issues we have that we need to tackle so so are those the main principles then behind ethical veganism uh i i would say all veganism like veganism is a re original meaning back in mm -hmm. 1944 when it was coined by its founders is is an ethical position and it's gone through many different sort of like forms, lifestyle veganism, you know, like food, plant based food diets, etc. But it, but veganism is an ethical consideration and belief mm -hmm. that you do as much as you can, whatever's practical and possible mm -hmm. to remove all exploitation of animals from your lifestyle, from your diet, from your practices. And so it is a it, it, it is a it is a set of practices based upon a belief that um, humans are not the exceptional beings mm -hmm. that stand above all of other beings on this planet and that we share this planet with them um, and that we actually be because we have all of these perhaps more developed skill sets or intellects or ability to use technology it actually gives us a greater responsibility to steward and care for the other beings on this planet rather than less of a responsibility where we consider ourselves dominant to them. So um, where do you recommend somebody goes to if they're thinking about becoming a vegan? Where's the best source of resources and information? Sure. The best sources of resource and information are actually definitely in the places where you get most support. And so there's a whole bunch of campaigns and systems or, or, or programmes in place where not only do you learn about veganism, but you actually get supported by many support group. So Challenge 22 is a really great place. Veganuary does that as well. Um, the Vegan Society also does that. So those are in the UK. Those are three really good places to be. Yeah. You'll find out everything you need to know. You, you, you'll also be told as well. Look, it's not a, it's not a black and white thing from the yeah. from day one. Do you know what I mean? You, you don't you, you're like it took me five years to get rid of a leather belt and eight years to get rid of a wool coat because actually you know, you, you, you take it with the you balance, balance. Yeah. With environmental issues, you know, and I have no problem with that. I used to wear my wool coat to when it was in winter to the vegan events where I was doing talks to make that point. You know, yeah. it can be a journey and you start every journey with a first with a small step. And the Challenge 22, Veganuary and the Vegan Society give you really simple recipes, really give you really simple in, in guides to what is and what isn't veganism. It gives you really good support to say, hey, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone sort of experiments upon their journey to get where they want to go. So just start where you can. That's a really good approach because I know that having looked at quite a lot of social media, there's always quite a lot of uh, criticism that comes towards vegans because of their approach but you seem to take a very pragmatic approach um which yeah, i think pragmatic. it must be very encouraging for people yeah i mean it's pragmatic in the sense that, that you begin with the end in mind so the yeah. end in mind is the end of the end of using animals and being really kind and just to animals mm. but 
you start where you're at do you know what i mean like so yeah. you start where you can and you make pro progress along that journey and what generally happens is i mean this is it's, it's psychology it's in every walk of life if you make the start easy and supported it gives you encouragement to take the next step if you make the start really difficult, difficult. black and white then people mm. don't even take the first step that's brilliant and i'll make sure that all the links to the uh, organizations you've mentioned are included just a final question um i think alex um i understand that more women are vegans um in comparison to men w why do you think that is what are the barriers to men becoming vegans yeah I, th I mean there's so many issues there about why more women are vegan than men um you know some a lot of that might be quite positive in fact that actually W women are allowed perhaps to be more sympathetic and emotional and have mm. connections with animals in ways that men aren't allowed to have those you know in terms of masculine roles mm. and the and masculinity is a massive problem in terms of blocking men from actually doing anything much healthier than mm. you know whether it's accessing doctor service or um mm. confiding in support networks when they're having emotional difficulties right you know it's very macho to have a stiff upper lip and actually th those are a lot that gender identity is a massive reason why mm -hmm. men think that we have to eat meat and women are okay with not eating meat so much so i interviewed 40 vegan men to find out what challenges they had faced and what barriers they'd overcome and strategies they used to overcome it and really it sort of chunked into three areas the first was forget all or nothing thinking, which is a very male thing to do. Do you know what I mean? It's like you can be vegan, for, you can have follow a vegan diet for six weeks, have some milk in your tea, and then it's like, oh, it's ruined. Everything's ruined. Then you go back and have a steak. And actually, if you get rid of that all or nothing thinking and think of it more yeah. as a journey and an experiment, yeah. well, you know, mistakes are built into experiments, you know, and, and you learn from it and you move on. The second thing was about... Um, thinking of others you know whether that be you find role models or you actually do it with or for others you know many of the men i interviewed wanted to be better fathers and, and give their children give their ch children better better food and so they did the research and they found out you know what that was all about and the second and the third one was um it was really about uh re reframing your relationship with food you know so actually is beer really masculine? Is a steak really masculine? Is chocolate or salad really feminine? You know, like, just ask, so what? Keep asking the question, so what? You know, why is it like that? And if you undo all of that, then actually you, you sort of open your world up to the fact that, most importantly, veganism isn't reducing or limiting yourself. It's massively expanding what, what you, how you can live according to your values. And actually, as a vegan, you generally end up eating a more diverse diet. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Alex. I really appreciate your time. That's okay.